We are live. Welcome to the number one. Tadio, shall I? Shall All right. I welcome to the number one. Yeah, sorry. I was, yeah. So welcome to the number one Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Tadio McDook. I'm joined as always by Dr. Hoji, Dr. Kismoji, and John Hello. Sheeran. And, and yeah. we have, we have a, the most respected guest I think we've ever had. The most right. honorable, honorable man we've ever had on the show. I'm talking about the one and only Wayne Box Miller. Miller, the Wayne, Wayne Box Miller. Miller. Yes, yeah. and 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 Wayne, if you don't know, is not only the voice of the Bengals. No. Okay, yeah. he does the halftime shows. He does the radio voice. He works with all the big shots in the studio. All of that. Not only that, does he entertain us? Does he provide us with insight and analysis? But he is the president of the Wayne Box Miller Media Company. Just imagine that. And he is an award-winning sportscaster. And he's a, he's, he's a communicator who's very active in, in the community and helping, you know, repair relations in terms of different uh, peoples in the community. He's a motivational speaker, and we're going to get that to that later because I'm really trying to improve the quality of the show. It's very hard when you have unmotivated <laughs> employees but uh, but yeah, so Wayne, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the introduction. I, I'm, that may come with an invoice. <laughs> it always does, Wayne. It always does. <laughs> I tell yeah, you what, he, he, he caught on. He caught on. There's a reason why we are disgruntled employees, Wayne. Well, Wayne <laughs> is an actual president and not a self-proclaimed dictator of right. his company. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, well, uh, that is true. That is true. But, you know, dictatorships, if you look historically, not the recent no, you boy. know, no. centuries, historically, they've been very effective. No. But we, that's a whole other conversation that it's we can have later. It's done. So, Wayne, I, look, I want to talk to you. Look, John has so many questions for you, and we're going to get to those quickly. Yeah. But I want to talk to you okay. about your... Yeah, I want to talk to you. We're going to talk about your community activism, obviously. But I want to know about your personal relationships with the Bengals and people in the organization. Okay. And what is that like? What are they like? You know, is, uh, you know, I mean, they say that, I don't know. Um, they say that Mike Brown, you know, there's so many rumors about him that he tried to use coupons at the lemonade stand, like a children's them. I mean, there's so many things they just throw out there that are just nonsense, yeah. you know, but we don't really know these personalities <laughs> that well. So we want, we want to hear about your Yes. You know, what are your great stories from the you know, players from the past and the present and the, and the yeah? Well, I'll, I'll give you a couple of stories. Number one, I, I like Mike Brown. I, I love talking to Mike Brown. Uh, I've run into Mike Brown away from the stadium, and, and we've had uh, conversations about things other than football, and that's when you really get to know a person. So really quick story, uh, they were doing an exhibit at the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, and part of that was a an exhibit with sports and African Americans in sports. And there was a name you guys may be familiar with, Bill Willis, one of the first guys that Paul Brown drafted of color in the NFL. And uh, Mike Brown helped to bring that exhibit here, and was a fan, obviously, of Bill Willis as a kid. But you see Mike doing those kinds of things. He's not going to bang the drum about it. Uh, but he's that kind of guy, man. He loves the community. We've had some conversations about race relations that were very endearing to me in terms of, of how Mike saw things. And I tell people all the time, when you think about Mike Brown and the length of time he gave Marvin Lewis to uh, get the franchise going where they both wanted it, by standards in the NFL, that exceeded the standards that are typically in place for coaches of color or coaches in general. So there's a lot to like about Mike Brown. I know everybody has their druthers about how the draft has panned out or how he's done certain things, but I think he's like anybody else. When you really sit down and get to know him, you understand there's, there's a lot about Mike Brown to like. Yeah, that was beautifully, beautifully stated. And, and that is, yeah, very, very touching. Yeah, I, I know. I've heard about his personal relations. Uh, with players. Yeah, people and, seem to like uh, him. People do seem yeah. to like him. I mean, you talk about, you know, the understanding of the community and you see the evolution of Mike Brown going from 
telling the players not to stand or to kneel, not to kneel for the anthem, to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to this year uh, doing the whole, you know. Yeah, I remember. John, you remember this year was, was an interesting year when it came to the Star Spangled Banner controversy. And uh, I believe the Bengals did revise their approach. And I was, I was pretty impressed by that. You know, Wayne, I, I'm going to pick up where Dadio left off here. And as one okay. motivational speaker to another, okay, from me to you, I want to think about how do we motivate the Cincinnati fan base. And here's yes. what I mean. I'm seeing a year where the Bengals are all in on redefining their image, okay? They're saying, uh, you know, we're going to have new uniforms. Yes. It's the rise of Liz Blackburn. I love her. I think she's great. They're trying to, but doesn't that, yes. you tell me as one motivational speaker to another, if I motivate someone and I build them up and then let them down, doesn't that make it worse? In other words, it kind of seems like a big gamble because if things don't get better this year and you've revamped, you can only change your uniform once. You can only redefine your, <laughs> your, your uniform once. It seems like a risky move. What do you think? Well, first, of, let me say this as a motivator. I am inspired by you more than you know. I mean, you you inspire you. me to heights unknown, and I thank you for that. I I'm glad you think said people that. give you your credit, so I'm going to give you credit for that. Mwah. But in saying that, as you know, in motivational speaking, as in anything else, it's the effort. Yes. It's the intent. It's the impact. And I think when you look at this team, I mean, draft and Joe Burrow, uh, we saw what happened with Joe Burrow. We have a quarterback that is a generational type player. Yes. And now you look at the free agent moves that they made with, you know, Reef and, and, and on the defensive line. And you look at, I think the biggest free agent move they made that nobody's talking about is bringing Frank Pollock back. I thought that that was exceptional. I thought it made a statement that, guess what? Maybe we let one go that we need to bring back in the fold because so many players respected him and played hard for him. And I think when it's all said and done, that may prove to be the best offseason acquisition they made. I agree. And I'll add just real quickly to that, Wayne. I, I said it at the time. It takes a big man to admit he's, that he's wrong. And that's essentially what Zach Taylor yes. did. And the, 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 what the Bengals did there is they said, hey, you know what? We want you back. You know, I made a mistake. Yes. I'm still in love with and you. I, and I think that, you know, the good thing about that is he's going to be part of coordinating, you know, a lot of the run game and things like that. And, and with Joe Mixon coming back healthy, uh, I think the offensive line with Pollock is going to be much improved. I'm excited for Billy Price. I'm excited for Michael Jordan. Uh, Quentin Spain was just signed. Um, there's a lot, lot to look forward to uh, on the offensive line and the offense with him there. And I think if you've ever watched him coach and watched him in practice, you, you can't help but get excited and feel good about how he operates and what he expects of his players. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, Wayne, I, yeah. Yeah. Ahead, I just then. want to say real quick, I just, yeah, real quick. It takes a big man to admit he was wrong. It also takes a big man to recognize, you know, to evaluate himself honestly. I think Wayne knows that better than anybody, having worked with so many people. So when Hoji talks about being a motivation speaker, I just, yeah. and, and you know, you talked about this, the hard work. I, I, I was actually hoping, you know, I'll be honest with you. I, I this saw this as a free session for getting motivation speaking for, for Hoji, uh, who takes a month off at a time. He was gone right. for a month. Well, and he goes on these well, spiritual retreats. Whoa. He's searching for rare medicinal mushrooms. Yes. He just, yeah. And, and it's like we have no idea when he's going to be back. Wait. What he's... Go ahead. I'm just interrupting you to mess up your flow. Go ahead, Dadio. Well, look, what Dadio is not pointing out here is that actually, uh, when I was on what I've invented, a new diet called the Veggie Crunch Diet. And uh, the Veggie Crunch Diet goes like this. You can eat anything that's a veggie and crunches. So for example, can you eat carrots? Raw, no, because they don't crunch. Uh, I mean, raw, yes, because they crunch. Cooked, no. What about rice? Can I eat rice? You can eat as much rice as you want, as long as it is not cooked, because then it crunches. And now I've pushed it forward. That's why I took more time off. 
and they've developed the dino veggie crunch diet. You basically eat like a dinosaur. And yes. what, the, what the, yeah. And what that means is you're going to like the fat goes extinct, literally. Yeah. So I, I've been I, on I can't that, even I've been tell on... you have any fat on you. Well, thank you. You know, I think we got to bring Wayne wow. back more often. Really, uh, don't 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 inflate Wait, it like this. Hold on. Wait, hold on. I thought you were going to call him out for his laziness. No. no. And no, for the look at the financial harm he has caused. You know, we have all this this other situation with all these conspiracy theories out there causing financial harm to our to our show. And then look at this mm -hmm. guy. I thought you would call him out, Wayne. Honestly. No. Well, Wayne I and think I... he's like some of the players. He is underrated. He's wow. underappreciated, and I think at some point, look for him to have a breakout conversation soon. Oh, we've been go. waiting for that. We, we've been waiting for that breakout conversation for about 10 years now, but I want to yeah. go back to uh, <laughs> Zach Taylor and something that you said in an interview about a month ago. You said, Zach Taylor represents new school. It's an evolution. It's as if the team evolves. You're seeing players that have a new school personality along the lines of Zach Taylor. Do you think that since Taylor has taking over the head coaching job in two years you like the, the the changes in their organizational philosophy they're spending more in free agency they're doing more things within the, the entirety of the franchise do you think that that specifically is the zach taylor effect or is it more along the lines of just evolving past what they were with marvin lewis yeah, i i think it's a combination of both but i think what what i gleaned from uh, my time around zach and the team since he's been here is that the players see this more so uh, as the evolution. And you think about how young the NFL is getting these days, and it's just a different game. And I, I talk a lot to different people in the world of sports, college basketball, you know, baseball, the whole nine. These games are evolving to younger players to try and track a younger fan base. I think Zach Taylor's energy is different. If you look at Zach and Marvin personality-wise, I mean, we all know that they're uh, total opposite ends of the spectrum. But what people don't know is Marvin is a very funny guy as well. He just does it um, when he's being Mar Marvin and not a football coach. And Zach is a very gregarious guy. And he does that when he's on the field with his players. And, you know, when he's, you know, with the media, he's a little focused. He'll find there. But I think that this game is one where the player, you have to get to know these players, and I think it's just generational, whether we like it or not. I'm, you know, I'm a little longer in the tooth than a lot of you guys, but you know, generationally speaking, it's a different breed of player, and it requires probably a different breed of coach. Um, you know, Belichick may be the unicorn, but you saw him last year struggle, uh, not having Tom Brady and trying to get those guys to play at the level he expects. Yeah, when you talk about how the game has changed, now, honestly, I mean, I can't, me and Hoji, we cannot keep up with the, the radical, I call them radical analytics, okay? They've just gone too far. You know, now they're like, how long is this guy's arms? You know, when they're right. talking about Penene uh, Sivel. Penene, right. yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. Well, they're like, his arms are this long, not well, that I long. Tell you th I, I tell mean, you this. Yeah. Yeah. Here, at the end of the day, here's here's the thing I look at. I say there's three D's that you look at. And it's data, details, and deliverables, right? So when I look at the data, I'm going to get all the information on the player I can get. And then I'm going to look for stuff in the details. You know, they say the double is the details. And then I'm going to look at the deliverables. How, how did he do on fourth down or... How did he play with two minute warning? Or how did he do in the fourth quarter when the you know the clock was ticking and you need a score, or you need a stop, or you need a first down? And you know, those those deliverables, because when you come to the NFL, every down you're going up against someone who is not the easy win on your college schedule. You're going up against a guy that is a pro bowler or a guy who's an NFL starter every down and so i look at those three d's man and i gotta kind of come to a conclusion one way or another and this whole panay soul thing i'm just glad i'm not the one responsible for the pick to be honest with you because yeah uh, five minutes ago it was jamar chase an hour ago it was panay soul yesterday i'm looking at kyle pitts i mean there's just a lot going on and then 
what happens if there's a bunch of trades and movement before it gets to us? Then what happens? You know, then what do you Which do? Which I actually would like. I hope that the Bengals do give I mean, up their number one pick. That's what I wanted pick. to ask you. Is I, I Yeah, thank you. I hope that they do give up their number one pick and get more in the second round. Why not? There's no real, no. I mean, there's nothing really that great that we need in the first round, whereas you can use the second round and get more stuff that you need. I, I think the veggie diet is affecting you a little bit. There. Always, um, always. I mean, my, my, yeah. my. I, I am not giving up a fifth round pick unless I'm getting a fourth round pick and uh or a six round pick with the insurance that somebody's going to take someone other than that but see you got to remember if you trade with somebody behind you and then they pull a trade with somebody else you know i i look at it this way do you want a guy that blocks that could you know make something happen protect joe burrow uh things of that nature and here's what i think a lot of people don't talk about with panay Sewell. Everybody says, get the offensive lineup for Joe Burrow. But how about also for Joe Mixon? Joe Mixon yes. is a thousand yard rusher year in and year out, unless injured. So whoever you get is not only going to benefit Joe number one, which is Burrow, he's going to benefit Joe number two, which is Mixon. And two so Joes. that may be the lean as to why you take Panay Sulo over Jamar Chase. Now, if I flip that around and say, well, A.J. Green is gone. You've got Tyler Boyd. Put him down for 100 catches. you got T. Higgins. He's really impressed in his rookie year, looking for year two. But do you have that guy that has just a spectacular uh, attributes that you put opposite uh, Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins? Or if you put T. Higgins on the opposite side and line up Tyler Boyd in the slot with Jamar Chase, then you've got that. So is Joe Burrow working the Bengals to get Jamar Chase and saying, we'll make the offensive line work? Or is Joe Burrow saying, get uh, Panay Sewell and then go get, I think it's Marshall, Terrence Marshall Jr. in the second round. When you think about uh, Jamar Chase setting out this year, Terrence yeah. Marshall had a good year knowing that he was the target. And he still was able to, let me see, I think he still turned in 48 catches, um, 10 touchdowns, and averaged 15 yards a catch. And he knows yeah. Joe Burrow as well. So you might be able to get, you know, two guys that can impact the team the way everybody wants when you decided on a wide receiver or offensive lineman. Maybe. The guy I had the stats think, ready. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's hard to argue with that. Two Joes, one line. Yeah. But you I mean, know, honestly, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ahead. let let me play devil's advocate as I am want to do, Wayne, and that is that, to me, yes. it seems that assessing a great offensive lineman as a first round draft pick is a harder thing to do in a vacuum, so to speak, than yeah. to see a great wide receiver. The talent is more clear cut. The, the individual talent of a wide receiver as a first round draft pick is more clear cut. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let me just make this, this other point. I mean, Sewell seems great, but he's part of an offensive line that is also great when he's not there. I mean, that to me mm -hmm. kind of makes me worried that maybe it's not so much about Sewell as it is about Alex Mirabal, who's put together a great offensive line. The Ducks, they just keep having that great wall of, you know, protection. And maybe what we do is we get we get see well and he's fine but maybe if we got jamar chase uh, you know uh, we're safer you know you know what i'm saying safety right it's a safe so here's the argument here's the argument yeah do you get jamar chase and then say does the quarterback have enough time to get him the ball or do you get panay Sewell and say he's got enough time but he doesn't have a guy to go deep and so yeah. that's the conundrum i think that you look at but for me Willie Anderson, who I have a great deal of respect for. You guys need to have him on your show. But I have a great deal of respect for Willie Anderson, and he loves the intangibles about this guy. Jeff Saturday, pro bowler with the Colts, and, and Peyton Manning thinks he's a plug-and-play guy. Those kind of names I can't ignore when they're making recommendations. But I will say this, and somebody brought this up, and I thought about it. They said, you could start him out at guard, the first two years next to uh, Jonah 
and then maybe uh, when Reef moves on, if he does, then you've got two tackles. But imagine Jonah Williams playing the way they expect him to. He played pretty well last year until he got hurt. Yeah, they saw right next to him, and Trey Hopkins, you know, at center. I mean, again, I think about both Joes. You know, you think about Joe Burrow, right, dropping back to pass, getting the time, but Joe Mixon, when they run the ball on that side to have both of those guys over there. And you all know, if Joe Mixon gets any kind of an opening, he's at the second level. And yeah. that's going to be it's trouble for those linebackers and ultimately the secondary. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would say this, uh, Wayne and Hoji, I would, I would say, you know, you talk about the intangibles. And mm-hmm. I remember a time, I don't know if Wayne remembers, I don't know if he's, uh, you know, I think Hoji and I are a little bit, we're, we've been around for a while. But uh, I remember when you used to measure offensive linemen in a totally different way. You, you remember when it was like, how many chest hairs does he have? How yeah. many buffets has he been kicked out of? Right. You know what I mean? Like, or how many it was Big like, Macs could eat? Yeah. How there many you go. Yeah. And, and yeah. this, and, and, and now it's like, you know, like Hoji and how many people, airplane think, seats does he need? Right. And I think that, I think they're overanalyzing it because I see in Pinay Sivan, I see a guy who is such a good athletic prospect that, that you know, the Bengals have not had success drafting the offensive line. They've tried. They have not had success. And this guy is a star is staring them in the face. And, you know, you know I, I, I love the idea of Chase, but I feel like – here's what I'm trying to say. I think we should be, come to terms with the fact that the Bengals are going to get Siva. They're going to do it because – they know the offensive line is the biggest problem, and they're going and they're like, we're going to fix this. I mean, unless they're really confident that someone is going to be their second round, but I feel like they have to make a statement, like they did when they got Billy Price. We needed a center, they get Billy Price. We needed right. a, a left tackle, we got Jonah. You know, and even before when they knew they were going to get rid of Whitworth, they go out and they get Obwehi and they get Fisher, and they're like, we know we have to do this, so they force themselves. Most into of the those pick. didn't work. Yeah, that's the key. Right. Is here's most the key of the point. Here's the key point. They, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I wanted to... No, no, no. That's how the show works. You're they supposed to... Yeah, if you don't get interrupt, we get upset. Yeah, yeah. I stop. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah, continually please. address the offensive line with those picks. And I, I say to people all the time, oh, the Bengals, they, they need to address the offensive line. Well, they did. It didn't work out. I mean, that's what the draft is about. It's a crapshoot. They had Jake Fisher yeah. from Oregon. It didn't work out. Cedric O'Boy, he from Texas A&M. It didn't work out. They made a decision on Andrew Whitworth, and it didn't work yeah. out. But they've yeah. got Trey Hopkins, a guy that was a late pick that worked out. They've got Jonah Williams, a first-round pick. It appears to be working out. They brought Reef in. He's a proven player. They've continued to address the offensive line. But people, I think, get hung up on simply complaining and not looking yeah at what they're trying to do there. One other thing about Panay Sewell that I like, and it's giving me a slight lean, just a slight lean, um, is that he has a personality that would help this offensive line develop an identity. And I think this offensive line needs an identity. Like uh, if you remember when they played the Tennessee Titans this year and they literally had all backups in the game, they won a game. The backups played a great game. And I think they had a, a no-name gang or something. I can't remember what their nickname was, but they had an identity, and they embraced that. And I, I think that's one other thing. Panay Sewell has a great personality. He's media-friendly, which we would all love. But mm-hmm. I think the other thing is that he has a personality that will help create an identity. And giving an offensive line that identity, man, to me, elevates them to another level. I'm sold. I want the, yeah. I want the naysay one. I'm yeah, sold. I mean, Don't talk. I'm sold. Yeah. No, I mean, I, speaking of being sold and having an identity, Wayne, I don't know if you know, but our show's identity now is eBay. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. So really? our show now, yeah, because... Yeah, he's going to sell secondhand shoes, Wayne. It's yeah. Kind of whether, <laughs> look, Wayne, whether it's the rare dead stock or the latest release, you, Wayne, you can find the exact shoe, the used, the, not used, the vintage shoe that you're looking for, okay, on eBay. It is the original a sneaky marketplace. Wow. Sneaker. Yeah. 
sneaker. sneaker market. These are, these are shoes the that Facebook. other people have worn before. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. On I'm sale going to see if we finish up today. Yeah. That is where I'm going. Yeah. I'm with you, Daddy. Perfect. Did we I'm lose going you, to see if I can find a guitar, too. Oh, you can find guitars on eBay, yeah. But, you know, yeah. the best I'm, place. Yeah, I'm, I would like but, one but, of your guitars. You are welcome to come play my guitars. Unfortunately, only if you the, buy it. I just want to hang it on the wall. Because oh, then you, we get yeah. the commission. Yeah, go ahead, Daddy. You were talking about, you were saying something something interesting about eBay, Daddy. Sorry, we missed the, the end of that whole yeah, thing about I, the vintage shoes and the sneakers. Yeah, vintage yeah. shoes. Sorry, yeah, vintage shoes. And eBay is the place to go if you want to discriminate against the pair, if you want to profile no, the no, pair that you no, buy. No, no, no. Yeah. No, and it's definitely not discriminate. I don't know what verb you're looking for. It says cop. And I just, is it cop? Yeah. Oh, and if then you want to cop a pair, eBay, that yeah. means to get, yes. to, to okay, procure. Pair, yeah. yeah. Right. With eBay's authenticity guarantee, your yeah. sneakers are meticulously inspected by independent professional author dictators. A team of experienced author dictators, a sneaky wait, wait, author wait, wait, dictators, wait, wait. Author, they verify wait, the box, the logo. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Author and, dictators? Look, yes, yes. They are, they are actually very, uh, no. they are people very talented. They have, they're, they, yeah. They no, multitask no. and they are author dictators. They write some really great books. But look. Just finish the ad read, man. This is painful. It makes no trying sense. to an author <laughs> dictator? It makes no sense. If, I don't know. I'm just reading the ad. Authenticate. It took me so and long. So, Authenticate. Any, See, now, Wayne, for, there's two yeah. things that Daddy can't do. One is drive. Can you believe a grown man? He cannot drive a car. Number two, read. He never went to school. He never learned how to read. And I don't judge him for that. But, to, but you know, okay, Daddy, please continue. I mean, Wayne, Wayne knows all about this. Wayne knows all about this. If you work hard enough, you don't. You can pay people to do both of those things for you. You can actually pay them to write books for you even. Just so you know, that's not. But anyway, so look, so look. I, I think I'm going to lean on the side of you learning how to read. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's way past that. What has? I don't want to pay look. anybody to read. I want to. Yeah, but if you if you are selling <laughs> shoes that are over a hundred dollars, it is no seller fee. So go to eBay.com slash sneaky uh, sneakers today. eBay, the world's best destination for discovering great value and unique selection. Now, Wayne, uh, I want to talk about your diversity work uh, because personally sure. i i'm always telling hoji that he needs to get you know up to date with this stuff you know he needs to learn how to diversify he's he puts all of his funds into green energy and i i don't i don't think it's a smart because i don't think it has a future and uh, so so how would you you know how do you that's not what yeah. diversity means Diversity is not that you invest in different stocks to make money. It has to do, it's a social justice issue where I you see. make sure that there's representation of the larger society in, yeah. Because, because that way you take best advantage of the economy. So it's kind no, of similar. No, no, it's believe it or not, it's not, not everything is about making no, money. Was... Yeah. So Wayne, please tell us about, the, about that work that you do. Well, well, thank you for asking. You know, first and foremost, uh, I do that work on a day-to-day -day basis uh, for St. Xavier High School as a director of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So something I'm very passionate about, but I also like to talk about diversity. I just spoke to a CEO roundtable yesterday morning about diversity. And, you know, the short answer is really this. It's just the goal for everybody to respect everybody else. That's I can water it down to that and take away all the other filters and say, you know, uh, if you're this or you're that. No, just be kind. Just be kind. I'll give you a perfect example of how easy it is. If I got a black man, a white man, a Hispanic, an Asian, a puppet, and they all went to a Bengals game in a Bengal jersey, everybody would drop their filters and high five and say, who they? Because we were intentional about getting along because we come together to root against the Steelers, the Browns, and the Ravens. We just do it. We don't think about it. But when we're out in our natural habitat, 
we all tend to look at someone, oh, I don't trust him, or I heard about them, or look at him. And we start putting all these filters and barriers in the way of simply allowing us to hate versus love instead of just saying, how you doing? Good morning. How are you? And we go to a football game. Boy, you see that striped jersey and a, a hootay cap, and we're playing the Steelers, and people can come from all walks of life, and all we do is high five and who they man if we could just treat life like that we'd all be getting along a lot better don't you think yeah i agree and you know the other thing is i think the team gets it the kids the players yeah. and the Bengals. i've noticed I that mean, yeah. like i love i love loved some stuff joe has said in solidarity uh and, and some of the stuff joe has done i feel like the team has a really good vibe and I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe the Bengals in general have a really good vibe. Well, even the shirt, this shirt that I have on, this shirt is a partnership with a yep. uh, black-owned company called Black-owned black -owned Outerwear. Yeah. And if you remember, the Bengals promoted that. Uh, Macho um, Cameron Means designed this as his company. And it was a simple partnership Elizabeth put together. Uh, I'm a big fan of hers, have been since the days of her making peanut butter sandwiches on uh, ciabattas and all that stuff. But, man, it's really that simple. Like, this was bringing I mean, yeah. together. Could you imagine, Daddy? Look. Could you imagine if instead of, of selling secondhand shoes, we sold something as cool as that? Well, I think, Wayne, yeah. let, just, let me How just cool see if I'm that? getting it. Let me just see if I'm getting this straight, Wayne. What you're saying is we need the Bengals to play more games to resolve problems in the community because if the Bengals are playing year round not only do you maximize profits by having obviously you have more revenue from more attendance and you have the you know you have the ratings you have the tv revenue but you are are bringing people together is i, I think that is what you, we need, we need really, like i don't think i don't think i don't think they can play more than the allotted well, well they added they added one more game and, and so I guess yeah they're, they're catching on they're catching on yeah 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 the, yeah, John, great point. They added one more game, so it's one more time we can get along and high five. I'm looking, I'm excited about this year. I think that the the players are excited, the fans are excited. There'll be more fans in the stands. I think. I think so. Uh, we're looking for Joe Burrow to bounce back from his injury. We're looking for Jesse Bates, who I think got snubbed, you know, in the Pro Bowl. Uh, what a phenomenal young player. I'm looking forward to seeing him on the field again. And and I'm telling you, I you know, people might say, Wayne, uh, you're a little touched in the head, but I think Billy Price having Frank Pollock back is going to be a really good thing for him. I Agreed. think that he's looking forward to uh, working with the coach who gets him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really think uh, – I know Michael Jordan has been working out with Willie Anderson – I mean, guys have really been putting in the work this offseason, realizing we've got something special here that, man, if we can get off to a good start, I mean, there's a good season ahead. And I'm not saying, like, playoff bound, that would be great, but considerable significant improvement from the last two years is waiting on this team this year. And I think they'll, they'll meet that uh, uh, expectation. Wayne. Yeah. Everything yeah. else aside, yes, Frank Pollock's back. Yes, Joe Burrow's back. DJ Reader will be back. That's what pumps me up. Yes. DJ Reader's going to be healthy again. Yes. I mean, DJ, those... And Mike Daniels is back. Yeah, but those 200 snaps that DJ Reader took, honestly, were the thrill of my life. I love that guy. I think he's yeah. the secret sauce, so to speak, of the Cincinnati Bengals defense. I'm happy to have him back. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he's another guy. He has energy. He has a personality. He gives a, the, the line an identity. And, you know, I still uh, can't believe you got Mike him. Daniels, who I like a lot. And, and again, not making excuses, not making excuses, but this team, uh, like the last year of Marvin Lewis, I mean, the injury bug ran through that team. I mean, just incredibly crazy. And you, every time you look up, somebody was down and somebody was hurt. And, you know, it just went on and on and on. So to see a healthy Cincinnati Bengal football team this year, I'm excited for what they can do when they've got everybody operating uh, as one healthy and full steam ahead. Yeah. 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 Well, that was, yeah, that was very encouraging. Inspiring and, and, and inspiring. motivating. That's what he does. That's what he does. That's true. 
Uh, I think Hoji is probably not going to take time off for at least a couple of weeks. Well, I think, no, I, I think with that, yeah. I have a I have a journey coming up. I have to discover the secret of my existence. Should only take about ten days. So that'll be coming up next week. I'll be taking ten days off to discover the secret of life and and my and the meaning of my own existence and why we're all here. I I, I need about ten days for that. Okay, okay. So so Wayne, yeah, we're going to have to get Wayne back in here. And really hammer home the the, the message, uh, but but yeah. So thank you so much, Vain, for coming on our show, and uh, and yeah, yeah. And well, thank you, Daddy. I'll for... say this. Yeah. Uh, I... Please, Wayne. I have a confession to make. Those thirty days that uh, Hoji was out, the team with me, helping me find myself. So we weren't supposed to talk about that, but thank you for the plug. Yeah, but I just, yes. That is a great now way to end the show. I can, I I can help it. everybody find it. themselves, too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now I understand why. Okay. Okay. Well, well. still, thank you, Wayne, um, for, for coming on our show. And, uh, yeah, so thank you. And please, everybody, leave a five-star review and subscribe, subscribe. to the podcast. Write a, write a comment in the YouTube. Yeah, Red and the comment, you can also uh, check us out. Yeah, I'd like to hear, it, can YouTube. we have in the comments in the YouTube wh which side of the draft you're on, the, the, the Sewell Chase debate? I'd like to hear more about that from you guys. I know we've heard a lot on yeah. Twitter, but not in the YouTube comments, it's, which is where we need to It's going to be a coin flip. Let's yeah. flip that coin. So it'll be one, it'll, your coin has three sides, so it could be Pitts, it could be Chase, it could be Panay Sewell. Yeah. Well, we want Panay Sewell. Yeah. Yes. So uh, today. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So that is all we have for this show. We will see you next time. So long. Is Sweetie Pies. Pies. Pies.